All right, guys, I'm back. I just watched Clash of Champions 2020, and um, I thought overall it was a pretty good show, actually. Uh, wasn't the best, but there were some good things on it. So I'm going to try to talk about it from beginning to end, but I don't remember in the order of some of the matches. So anyways, let's talk about the kickoff show. Um, that CNET article thought that Asuka would have the match with Zelina Vega for her women's title on the kickoff show. Um, we missed the kickoff show a little bit late. It ended up being the tag team match with Cesaro and Nakamura against Lucha House Party. We caught the tail end of that match. It seemed okay, whatever. I never expected it to be anything great. Cesaro and Nakamura kept the titles. That was that. Um, my cousin told me that he had saw on Facebook previously that because of COVID that some of the matches weren't gonna happen. And that was going to be the women's tag team match. It's going to be off the table. And Bailey was not going to wrestle against Nikki Cross, uh, but Bailey would be on the sh show. So, the very first match that started the actual pay per view was the triple threat ladder match with AJ Styles, Jeff Hardy, and Sami Zayn. And Jeff Hardy is the Intercontinental Champion. Sami Zayn saying that he's still the Intercontinental Champion because he was the champion and he left for a while. And uh, they decided to make a new champion. So we have a ladder match where to win you have to climb the ladder and you have to retrieve the belt. Well, there were two Intercontinental titles hanging from the top. And uh, me and my cousin were talking to some friends outside. And when we came in at like 6.30, when we came in, you know, we came in like in the middle of the ladder match and we we're like oh that was like the first match we have to go back and make sure that we watch that because that was one of the main matches that we were both interested in and uh, i knew that these guys could really deliver i was kind of worried about how would they finish it or you know what will it really be anything and uh, it was pretty good now i will say that what made a lot of the match was jeff hardy sacrificing himself because he did take some ugly bumps uh, they had the ladder spread open like that, and they have like the middle thing in the ladder that keeps it open. Jeff Hardy, I think he jumped off the top rope and ended up like hitting his ribs on that. <laughs> and uh, there was also a part where he was kind of like on the top rope, and somebody hit him or threw a ladder at him, and he like tumbled out of the ring like with the ladder. And I was like, oh man, <laughs> like he could get get his leg caught in the ladder or get his arm caught or his neck or whatever he like tumbled down with the ladder and it looked ugly but you know it could have been really bad but that's Jeff Hardy he takes those risks and uh, it did make the match more entertaining so um, also AJ did his moonsault off the announce table onto the floor to Sami Zayn into the scorpion death drop onto the outside and uh, I guess my cousin said he does that frequently I don't remember seeing that for a while so and he did it like perfectly this time so it was amazing that move really blew me away i don't know why but uh did that perfect moonsault off the announce table landed on his feet next to Sami Zayn, and then put his arm around his neck and brought his head down onto the mat on the outside um then Sami Zayn brought out two handcuffs and uh, he went and he handcuffed jeff hardy jeff hardy has these big stretched earlobes and he put the handcuff into his earlobe and then he attached the other end of the handcuff to this mini ladder there was like a mini ladder that they brought into the match earlier it got thrown at uh sammy Zayn or somebody they were climbing the ladder and somebody threw the mini ladder at him um and so then he went to aj and um they were wrestling and aj was kicking his butt and he basically uh, he handcuffed AJ, okay, and AJ was fighting him, and then he handcuffed himself to AJ. And so AJ kind of laid him out, and then AJ was going to climb the ladder, but then he found out, whoops, I'm handcuffed to Sami Zayn now. So, uh, anyway, in the end, who won? It was Sami Zayn. I predicted it. So, so far, so good. I predicted that Nakamura and Cesaro would keep their titles. That was true. I predicted that Sami Zayn would win the Intercontinental title in the Triple Threat, and that was right. Now, I don't remember exactly what matches happened next. I'm kind of drawing a blank here with what happened. Um, was it the women's match with Asuka and Zelina Vega? It might have been. And that match was okay. Okay, I guess Zelina Vega has wrestled in, in a TNA or Impact Wrestling before as Rosalita, something my cousin told me. I didn't really remember her. 
Cheated okay. I don't really remember anything too interesting about this match. Um, except for how they ended it. Okay, Asuka won. And then uh, she said uh, Zelina was not ready for Asuka. She always says this. You know, she beats somebody. She says they were not ready for Asuka. Well, anyway, it looked like they were going to shake hands or something and respect each other. Well, instead, Zelina Vega did like a bow. So then Asuka did the bow, and then Zelina Vega cheap shot at her. So they fought, and then Zelina left, and Asuka started going off in Japanese on her. Uh, but that was that. It was okay, but nothing. Didn't really expect much, but I was right again, because Asuka retained her title. And um, next, maybe, was... Uh, I'm drawing a blank about the orders of these. Okay, another thing was that the 24-7 title was... R-Truth had it. He's had it for like 30 times or something. He lost it earlier to Drew Gulak. It's a title that can be uh, defended at any time. If somebody has a referee and they just see somebody out in the street, they can pin them and have the referee count. It's a stupid idea. It was on the show a little bit and it's just completely senseless. But I was thinking, you know, since they're having all the titles, they should have it. And they did have it there, uh, but not really a great thing. So. There's that. They had the tag match. I don't remember exactly when this happened, but they had the uh, Street Profits versus Angel Garza and Andrade, and uh, that match wasn't really all that great. Um, the one thing that I thought was that Montez Ford reminds me of Damon Wayne, or Waynes, or whatever. You know who I'm talking about, the guy that's in Scary Movie and, and White Chicks and all kinds of great movies, but the comedian guy, so... Maybe it was like the haircut or something, but he really was kind of looking like him tonight. But uh, I love the Street Profits. They're great. The match was okay. They kept the titles. Okay, I don't remember anything really great happening from that. Um, I know Bailey did come out and um, she said, you know, something like Nikki Cross isn't here or something, so I'm issuing an open challenge. Who wants it? Anybody? Anybody? Nobody? Okay, I'm going to go to the back. Well, out comes Asuka. Kind of a disappointment, but whatever. But they started getting into the action pretty heavy, so this is Asuka's second match of the night, and uh, the action was pretty intense for a while, but what happened? Bailey ended up disqualifying herself. And the WWE, usually, if there's a title match and there's a disqualification, then the champion keeps their title. So, Bailey's a bad guy. She disqualified herself by hitting Asuka with the chair. She keeps the title. But then, who comes out? Sasha Banks. They're feuding. I was saying maybe Sasha would cost her the title. She didn't. She came out after the match was over and she uh, beat on Bailey. I don't really remember much else that happened there, but that was just a match that was thrown together real quick. Whatever. Um, I know I'm probably missing something. There was the Apollo Crews Bobby Lashley match. That didn't really amount to much. Uh, I don't think that I was very impressed with that. Ricochet came out with Apollo Crews. MVP was out there with Lashley, and I don't really remember anything too great about that. So, but Lashley kept his title, and Bailey kept her title. I predicted those two. Um, now there's the two main events. Uh, I'm really trying to think: am I missing anything here? There's the women titles. There's the two tag teams. There was the Intercontinental and the ladder match, and there was the U.S. for Bobby Lashley. I think that was it, and then there was the two main events. So these were also the other interesting matches. So we had Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton, and the last match was Roman Reigns and Jey Uso. So Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton, I didn't predict that it would be very good, even though it's an ambulance match. An ambulance match, basically, you're supposed to knock out your opponent and get them inside the ambulance and slam the door, and then you win the match. There's lots of different variations of this, like a casket match. You put somebody in the casket and close the lid, and you win the match. Or a dumpster match. You put them in the dumpster, you close the lid, you win the match. And there's probably other examples, too. There's the buried alive match, where you put them in the pit and then shovel dirt on them. But, um, you know, the casket match, basically, kind of for The Undertaker specifically, but yeah, so there's different variations. The ambulance match, I think it's because Randy Orton punted Drew McIntyre in the head, supposedly really injured him before, and this is kind of like the revenge, and um, so, <laughs> yeah, this is, you know, his revenge, but it's for the title, Drew McIntyre is the champion, and... 
They brawl and they get outside the ring to the ambulance and uh, Drew McIntyre pulls off some crutches off the ambulance. He pulls off a red steel chair that has like a white cross, you know, like a right white, you know, like an ambulance, like a health sign. And so they use the weapons, they beat each other. Um, before, they, before they really got over to the ambulance, so there was a surprise appearance by the Big Show. Apparently Big Show is one of the legends that Randy Orton punted. Land, Randy Orton's been on another spree of knocking out legends. And so one of them that he did a while back was the Big Show. The Big Show showed up with a face mask on, you know, like for COVID, like covering his face. He looked like, I thought he was one of the Retribution members. It's Retribution, it's this new group in the WWE that's supposed to be terrorizing the WWE. They're all wearing masks and stuff. They're supposed to be like anarchists. Like They weren't on the show at all, so you know. <laughs> How good are they at destroying WWE when they're not on like one of their pay-per-views? So that kind of blows my mind. But um, yeah, Big Show showed up. Was like, who's that? Whatever. He he grabbed Randy Orton as he was about to do a move. As he, as he was about to punt Drew McIntyre, I think Big Show like grabbed his foot and then he ended up choking, choke slamming him through the announce table. So that was kind of random, but whatever. Then Big Show left. They fought over to the ambulance. Then they fought to the backstage area where they had some catering out there and they fought a little bit and Christian comes out and beats up Randy Orton. So we see now that like legends are showing up, getting their revenge on Randy Orton. He like throws them into the catering and stuff. They go back out to the ambulance. They fight on top of the ambulance. Drew McIntyre gets slammed through the ambulance windshield, which was pretty cool. And it really like scraped up his back. You could see it, you know, the blood coming through. It wasn't really bloody, but you can see like the deep red scratches or whatever that it caused. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, they fought more. <laughs> I'm trying to think uh, if I'm missing anything majorly. Basically, you know, there was a spot where Drew McIntyre was gonna give his kick to Randy Orton and the door was open and Randy Orton was in front of the ambulance door and he went in as he kicked, he kicked the door off. You could see that coming a mile away, but it was more destruction and anyways Drew McIntyre ended up winning okay which I predicted again Drew McIntyre kept his title and you know at the end of the day then they had Ric Flair come out and drive the ambulance off because that was another legend that Randy Orton hunted um, you know there's more that could be said maybe about this match but it was actually all right okay because of all the interference and the random stuff you know it's not probably going to be like a match that I'm going to be like, wow, you know, I want to show that to everybody. There was not really anything like that on this show, but it was, it was entertaining. So anyway, final match was Roman Reigns and Jey Uso. So everybody is speculating what's Roman Reigns going to come out like. Is he going to come out with new theme music, a new attire? Well, he came out without wearing his, check, his uh, chest protector thing on. So he just had pants on, no shirt. And he came out with the exact same theme music, so nothing really different there. Um, him and Jay fought back and forth. It was pretty good. But uh, when Roman started getting the advantage, Roman was talking a lot. So he was trying to get a lot of character out there. And he was he was beating Jay Uso and he's saying, you know, I'm the tribal chief. I'm the tribal chief. They're cousins. They're from a Samoan family. And uh, he was beating Jey Uso, and he could have pinned him. He did his finisher, his spear to him, and he could have pinned him, but he refused to pin him. He wanted to beat him more, and he wanted Jey Uso to say that Roman was the tribal leader. And he refused to, and so he, Roman just kept beating him, just kept beating him. And um, eventually Paul Heyman, who is with Roman Reigns now, he was like, okay, Roman, you're the tribal leader. Like, I believe you. Like, you're the leader. Like... Paul Heyman was trying to save Jey Uso from an extreme beating and Roman's like no I want to hear him say it so they had some drama in there some of it was drawn out and not so well acted and stuff but I get what they were going for and it was pretty good so but you know my cousin was like whatever Roman or uh, Paul Heyman would uh, laugh and dance on people's blood when Brock Lesnar was destroying people but now he's supposed to have emotion but I guess he's supposed to be kind of tied to the Samoans or whatever but so Roman keeps beating him until finally Jimmy Uso, Jay's brother, comes out and he's going to throw in the towel and he's like, Jay, I'm going to throw in the towel, I'm going to throw in the towel, this needs to end. And Jay says, no, 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 don't, you know, don't give in to this fool, like, we're not going to do this. Well, 
Eventually, Jimmy does throw in the towel. The referee calls the match, and it's over. And um, Jimmy gets in there with Jay, and uh, <clears throat> you know, and Jimmy's like, "Okay, Roman, you are the tribal leader. You are the tribal leader. Whatever, man. Just, just chill. Just chill." And Paul Heyman comes out with this boa thing that, uh, you know, like Honolulu, kind of like whatever they call those, you know, like a boa around his neck, uh, like the Samoans wear, I guess. It's what Jay, Jay Uso actually came out with it on his neck, but Paul Heyman like christened like Roman Reigns and put it on his neck. Like, yeah, I'm the tribal leader, so it makes me wonder what's going to go on from here. Are they going to be like a faction or whatever? I want to see, you know, Roman fight somebody who can actually fight him. Um, that's how it ended. So it does make me interested to see still where they're going, going with Roman. I knew that there was going to be a beatdown on Jay, but I didn't know there was going to be like all this extra drama. And Roman was very vocal during this match. He just kept talking. He's like, you know, I told you just to sit and just take a paycheck. This is that beating I told you about that you're going to get. He's like, you should have just sat and got a paycheck. Like. He's like, you're trying to get up to my level, like, I'm, uh, this is my level now, I'm showing you what this is like, and he just kept talking trash the whole match. Um, but yeah, I don't think I'm really missing out on much else. This was with the Thunderdome, they don't have the live audience, they have video screens everywhere. You know, there's this Thunderdome where people can sign in and get on their webcams and they're displayed on monitors all over, like, hundreds of people or whatever. And it's kind of weird. <laughs> Uh, because they pipe in the cheers and you know they might do that a lot anyways you know people always say they pipe in cheers and stuff but it's definitely noticeable in this because they were doing like chants like during the ladder match they were chanting this is awesome and it's like you see all the people on the screen they're like falling asleep they're like not doing anything it's like okay uh, it's not going together you know it's um, I don't know what else I can say I need to get some of this juice so I'm at 17 minutes of recording and it told me I could only record like 20 so uh, I don't know guys um, I'm just really looking forward to the next AEW pay-per-view because I know that will be amazing I'm sure without a doubt so they've never really let down I was wondering where where are a lot of people during this Keith Lee never showed up for the McIntyre and Orton match. You know, where's Aleister Black? Where's Kevin Owens? I know they have a bloated roster. I know they have issues with COVID and traveling and this and that, and there's just so much crap going on now. Uh, overall, it was a pretty good show though, I guess. It was okay. I was 100% right on my predictions. Okay, they didn't have the women's tag team title match. And uh, the match with Bailey that was supposed to be against Nikki Cross was against Asuka instead. They would have done the exact same thing if Nikki was there. She would have beat Nikki and Sasha would have came out. Um, but she didn't beat Asuka, she disqualified herself. So I wonder if she would have wrestled Nikki, she might have actually beat her. Um, that might have been the only difference. But it was a predictable show, you know. AEW is really good about bringing a lot of unpredictability. You know, um, they bring that magic to wrestling. Like when it's really, really good, and you're like, man, I don't know what way they're gonna go with it because I could see it going either way. And you know, these competitors, like I could both see the future going both ways, but WWE too often, a lot of these matches almost seem like squash matches. Like they're just going up against people that you know they're gonna beat. Uh, but, I'm going to go ahead and end this video, so thanks for tuning in, guys. God bless. Let me know what you think.